next is starfish and again this is really meant just to expose you to the applications we don't expect you to be pros of any of them afterwards but at least you know they're around and a little bit of what they do so that you know who to ask or reach out to um, and what about in the future so starfish first i just wanted because i get this question a lot so why in the world is it called starfish the company named it starfish based off of this story here where a little boy was throwing starfish from the beach back into the ocean and there were several of them they were all over and um this person was watching it and observing it and came up to the kid and basically said why are you doing this there's too many why even waste the time but that boy smiled and said after he threw one of the starfish back in the ocean and said it made a difference for that one so very powerful story but it's the idea that it may seem big we may have eight thousand students but that doesn't mean that we can't work together to make a difference in each one of their lives individually um, and that's the goal of the company so starfish is an online student success environment um, now they even tout the word enterprise because they have several components they keep adding um, it is used primarily in counseling but it can also be used for tutoring and uh, for instruction and some other community colleges in california it's interesting they actually are primarily used by tutoring centers and so since this is a very versatile program we can make it how we or use it how it best fits our needs but there's a, a lot of um, scalability some of the features include supporting networks for courses so we can tie particular supports to the student as a whole or based on the courses they're enrolled in receiving alerts that could be flags or kudos um, for concerns or doing a good job getting referrals to other services on campus signing up online for appointments. A lot of departments haven't taken advantage of that yet. They still have them call, but that is another future option available for us to turn on if desired, where they can log in online and book appointments. And then they also, for faculty, they can submit progress surveys for their classes each semester that will automatically raise flags and kudos for that all around support to be provided to the student to help them hopefully make it through that class versus failing or dropping. So there are four parts to Starfish. We currently have only purchased two of those parts, um, which is the early alert functionality and the connect functionality. But just in case you're in other meetings across campus, there are two other pieces, Bakersfield, Santa Barbara, Sierra College. A lot of colleges have the whole suite, but just know we currently have half of it. So we have the early alert functionality and then the count, the connect is the appointment piece and for the office hours and um, the appointments and counseling. Degree planner, just so you know, is a competitive piece to degree works. It's Hobson's version of it. Um, and then predictive analytics um, is similar to Civitas, which is a product we have. So competing tools. And this product does integrate with Banner. We have that turned on. I'll talk a little bit about that. Also Canvas. And then we have it feeding into Argos for reporting. So Starfish is seen as one of those unique programs that can serve as a bridge because it potentially used in both sides of the house. It's something that we can use in academic services for notes, for flags, for kudos, but also in student services for appointments. So it's a great product to use if we're wanting to have a single place where we're documenting those interactions with students so that we can see how we can best support them as a team. So we did do progress surveys the past two semesters. This is a quote from our fall semester. A faculty member sent this to me. They were so excited because it was their first semester using it. They filled out the progress survey. They said it took them less than 15 minutes. And then a counselor called them and said, I got the notification about the student. I reached out to them and you know, we'll help it the student get through the term. And the faculty member just thought that was so awesome. So they let me know this tool is great. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us. The workflow, just you know, with the flags, another common question is when a flag is raised by either a faculty member or by a student or staff member, 
That list is exported daily by the Student Equity and Achievement Team under uh, Dean Bianca, BC. And it's divided among them. They follow up and they close those flags. If they are able to reach a student, it will be successful. If they weren't, they can mark that, you know, it was unsuccessful, but the follow-up still happens. And then a notification is sent to the person that raised the flag that that loop was closed so that we can see from start to finish the action taken. And everyone knows that your work matters. What you're doing is having an impact. And our goal is five business days. If there are several flags, obviously it takes longer. Another common question I get under FERPA, we are compliant because I get the questions about notes like who can see what. A lot of these everyone can see within student services, within instruction, um, but as long as we need it to do our job, we are compliant and we are okay under FERPA. Now, DSPS information as well as um, student health information is confidential. It is protected information. So those particular note types and appointment types are not visible to anyone beyond those particular departments. They are very much on lockdown. So just know if there are notes regarding a student um, pertaining to the DSPS department, you won't see them. It's like they don't even exist. Doesn't mean that they're not there. You just don't have the uh, privilege set to view them. So another common question again is, well, someone told me there's a note here on this record, but it's not there. And it's because of a, a privilege set. So we take um, confidentiality very seriously. Now, Starfish is a roles and relationship program. So depending on your role at the institution and the relationship you have with students, that will depend what your view in Starfish looks like. So it can vary from person to person, a very tailored experience. You do need to have at least one connection to students to be able to access Starfish. So for faculty, that connection is the students are enrolled in their class and they can only see students taking their classes. That's it. For counselors, for student services folks, you have to let me know. Um, I need a service desk ticket. We'll talk about that in order to add you. And then once I have added you, you are given an all student relationship, which then gives you access to all 32,000 student records in Starfish to some capacity. Now that process where I'm updating those relationships and those roles, that's nightly. It's a what we call a batch process. So if you tell me to add someone right now, that would take effect by tomorrow morning. It's not instantaneous. So that's important to know as you hire student workers or new employees, let me know in advance so that we can make sure that everything's set up for their first day. And we do have student users, uh, student worker users, but they have their own privilege set, very limited. They cannot access student notes or information. All they can do is book appointments. Usually we have them at the front counters. One of my favorite features of Starfish is the ability to import cohorts and attributes. This is how we can start tailoring that data and those flags and those messaging um, to the students. So a cohort could be ASG students. It could be athletes, it could be whatever we want it to be. Starfish does limit our cohorts to 40. We are not even close to that, so we have scalability. Uh, attributes, there's no limit. So if it's something that we wanna filter by but don't necessarily need to trigger special messaging templates for, then we could use an attribute instead. Um, cohorts have more tracking ability. So again, it's that conversation of, well, what do you need to do with this data this population uh, and then we could talk about how that would best be either cohort or attribute uh, for example online students might be a good cohort because then we can do automated flags for students that haven't signed into canvas in more than two days for example now tracking items are there's four different types but that's what is referred to when you hear flags referrals those are all considered tracking types in starfish and we can tie those to workflows, who's getting them, is it via email, what message template is used, a lot of customization based on tracking item type. We currently have 21 referrals. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but basically referring to tutoring 
or to counseling or to mental health or so on. Uh, for to-dos, this would be actions for students to take. We currently have 18 built. 10 of them are from counseling. It could be complete comprehensive ed plan, complete orientation or so on. Um, and with any of these, just know you want to add some from your area. Exciting. Awesome. Let me know. We can have a meeting and talk about how we can add more that would be tailored to yours actions you want students to take. Um, we currently only have four kudos types. They're very generic, like way to go. Great job in class. Would love to see us expand that more as well. And then we have 11 flag types. That could be students stop showing up students doing uh, poorly in class or missed a quiz or student missed an appointment. So we have a, a few flags there. You can assign due dates to tracking items, but it's not mandatory. And you can even assign them to specific people to do the follow up on. And as we do a little test drive, you'll see some of those options. And again, access to be able to raise or view or close is based on your role. So if there's certain flags you are not able to raise, we need to have a conversation. Um, counseling ones typically can only be raised by student services. Uh, faculty can uh, usually only raise the ones that are tied to class performance and so on. Now, message templates is another favorite feature of mine just because of the other products that we have used don't always have this feature. It is nice that they are HTML friendly so we can make them look attractive. We can add pictures, colors, and new functionality just added, so we haven't rolled it out yet at IVC, but we're in the process, is text messaging. They now have SMS functionality. The automa it's automatically opt-in, and students can opt out in their profile setting, but then that way it will send it to them via text and via email. So then that way, as we know, text messages tend to get a lot more follow-up. So we're excited that that functionality was added. California Community College system as a whole are super excited because then we don't have to look at third-party text messaging services for um, some of those bigger messaging going out. So we were very excited to hear this announcement just, I believe, last week. Here's an example of a message template currently uh, rolled out. So this is a flag academic performance concern. So it will automatically put in the student's first name and then the name of their course. And then if there was a note that the instructor put when they raised the flag, it would show up there um, where it says Rachel missed three classes this month, whatever the faculty member put. And then it says contact me right away, sincerely, and then whoever raised the flag. Those are all automatically populated. And a lot of effort went into these templates as far as the verbiage. It's meant to, it normalizes it, and it's common for students to go through this and overcome them trying to use that, that positive speak. A couple of our kudos examples. We appreciate your dedication and hard work. Keep up the good work. I appreciate your dedication and hard work in the classroom. Keep the momentum going. So short and sweet. And what's neat about these templates is you can actually have them look different to the internal person. So for this same flag, a student gets one message, but then the person that it was assigned to gets a different template. So a lot of customization here. So here, the flag was raised and the person that's responsible for managing that flag gets an email with all the details in it what the flag is, who it's for, what class it's for, and so on. So they can immediately act. And again, these are all um, customizable by appointment type. So when I say appointment type, that's what drives our groups right now. So for example, we have appointment type EOPS. We have appointment type triple S trio. Um, all of our various counseling groups, we have appointment type for online counseling, for uh, instructors, instructor office hours, and so on. So we group them by category at IVC. That has been our strategy. And for each appointment type, that drives the reasons. So we can add the reasons that they would meet based on that type. And the reason drives the length of the appointment. We have to put default lengths in. And then speed notes are nifty little check boxes that we can program by appointment type so that your common conversations, if you'd always tend to talk about 
fill out graduation petition form, something that's common. Then we can add a checkbox, so then that way when you're taking notes about that interaction, you can just check the box versus typing it out over and over for every appointment. And those are all reportable, so we can say how many had this box checked and get a quick count. Kiosks are also a neat feature. It is how students can sign in for their appointments or for walk-ins. Currently, this is live for general counseling and for EOPS. Um, it's definitely scalable as well here. Students can walk up and type in their G number or they can um, swipe. If you have a card swipe, usually those are about $40. They can swipe their student ID and this it has been a very helpful. It's on an iPad for the two areas that I mentioned. It also could be on a desktop computer. Once the student signs in, it's similar to that DMV experience. It tells them how many people are ahead of them about the average wait time. And then at any time, they can go up and check their status, see how many people are still ahead of them and how much longer it um, is estimated to take. And then on the back end, the counseling group assigned to that kiosk can see how many are waiting, how long they've waited. And as an administrator, you have a panel that tells you the longest wait time. So you can jump in if you're noticing people are waiting a very long time and say, hey, can we speed this up? Um, so it's a great way to manage large crowds, especially walk-in appointments. From a student perspective, a student experience, we have only done a soft launch. Um, we have it available in Canvas to them. It's also on our website, but it's under faculty and staff, so it's not intuitive for them to select it there. Um, but we haven't really said, here's Starfish, use it yet. That's still one of those little check boxes for us in the future. Um, but from a student perspective, if they click on it within Canvas and access it, they see their connections, which is great for case management. Uh, programs like EOPS where there's an assigned counselor to a student. It also shows them service cards for departments and they can raise their own flags. We only give them three, which I'll show you, and then they can track their own referrals, to dos, flags, or kudos that have been raised on them um, as long as we have them set to visible because of course there's some flags we don't want them to see. That's an internal conversation. Um, and then they can also, if enabled, schedule appointments with those that have availability in Starfish Online. So I will say, I personally, whenever I was teaching, I used this for office hours. It worked great. Students were able to sign up for my availability. And then once they signed up, they got an email, I got an email, an Outlook invitation. So it was on my calendar. And they got a reminder to show up. And that greatly reduced my no-shows because of that reminder. So it was a neat feature. And I love that they could just schedule themselves and grab those blocks all using Starfish. There is calendar integration available. I strongly encourage you to set that up. It's very quick. I'll show you the box that has the link to the steps. If you get stuck, let me know. But this lets it read your Outlook availability so that when appointments are scheduled, it won't allow overlap. And there are reports for Starfish available on that, what we've talked about a few times already, the reports via SharePoint. Um, if you click on Starfish, we have reports available for tracking item data. For notes, um, you can pick an appointment type and type in a keyword and pull it up or search by student. Speed notes are those check boxes I mentioned. Um, Walk-ins by hour, once again, you select an appointment type and it will let you know how many students you're seeing per hour for the walk-in appointment type and success plans. Those are, and I know we also have EOPS reports in there too. Again, if there is a report in there that you want modified or tailored to your area, just let me know, send in a service desk ticket and we can expand those reporting options. It's just what our current inventory is. So here's what one of those reports looks like for the student no-shows. This is for EOPS. You select the date range and you select to run it and it will be um, available via PDF to download and print if you needed to or visible on your screen as a, a CSV. And then it will tell you that student information and um, if there was a description why they missed that appointment. And there are reports available in Starfish as well via CSV. 
And this is the big news. I already mentioned the text messaging. Very exciting. Um, we are also, we just had our kickoff meeting yesterday looking um, to do the upgrade that we had just purchased. And so this will include prospective students, retention scores that will help us filter and identify students that are have risk factors um, and tailor messaging based on those risk factors. There's a major kiosk overhaul. There's just a lot of neat features. The California Community College system pumped in $3.5 million into Starfish last year as a system to get a lot of upgrades that they were wanting for our system specifically. So we're seeing all those upgrades now available. So it's now a matter of us putting it on our calendar to get them all in there. And now it's demo time. I know we're all as excited as these minions are. This is the student facing view. I picked on Moises. He's our former ASG president. We're buds. That's why I picked on him. And um, this is what it looks like when a student logs in. So when a student logs in up here at the top, your connections, this is what I meant when it comes to that case management. If there is a relationship built in banner, then we can bring that relationship over. So EOPS does assign counselors to students. So that way the student can see right away that's his EOPS counselor at the top, which is pretty neat. Um, and then underneath that are the service areas. Again, if your area is not on here, we should build it. Just tell me what you want it to say. Um, but we have, for example, EOPS, if you click on one of these cards, it will tell you who are the team members of that service, an, expl an explanation here, an overview of that service, and then on the side, how to contact that service. Could be a website link, a phone number, an email. It even could be your office hours if you have them. Um, whatever information you're wanting on this card, this is what students would see. And I like that it has a similar look and feel to like the Canvas tiles, which is what students are also used to. You can also click on Show Other Services, and there's additional services down here at the bottom. Definitely would love to expand these. This is, these are the cards we currently have built. And for this student, if they click on their counselor, they can see if they have office hours built. And if they do, they even get this schedule appointment button available that they can click on to schedule the appointment. So that is what I wanted to show you primarily for the student view. Also wanted to show you that their dashboard is very basic, not much to it basically, just if they have any tracking items and what their schedule looks like if they have any appointments and then that they can raise their own flag, which we word it as request help. So if they click on request help, they can select academics, financial aid, or housing. The academics and housing go to the C program, financial aid goes to financial aid. Um, this again, we can expand, but that's what we currently have. And they can put if it's pertaining to a specific course and then type why they need help and submit it and it will automatically trigger a flag that they raised themselves. So that is the student view. Now I'm gonna switch over to the employee view. So as you will notice, it looks quite different for, from an employee perspective. And so you'll have your dashboard come up first, flags you're managing. Since uh, I have an admin access, I see all the flags. So I usually have this collapse because it's I mean, usually a thousand or more, so just keep it closed. Um, you can close any of these if you would like. You can even drag and drop these around. They're widgets so that you can have it display what's best for you. Um, this shows the concerns. And then if you're uh, tied to any particular service, it will say my service down here. So I assign myself to C just so you could see what it would look like. Um, and then calendars you're managing. If you are a calendar manager, then you can see those calendars here. So as administrators, um, it would be nice for you to have access to those calendars of your staff. So that way you can quickly click and view that calendar for that particular person um, in the event it was needed. Now on the left-hand side, once again, another hamburger menu. Remember how I mentioned that Outlook integration? You're gonna to get to that by clicking on your name and clicking on appointment preferences. And then up here on the top, we'll actually see all three options. But here, this is where you're going to add a location and add any calendar managers, which these are people you're okay with them seeing your calendar. And then for email notifications, right here, 
read busy times from my external exchange calendar, you would need to check that box. Instructions are here. Basically, you're sharing your Outlook calendar, so it tells you how to do that. And then once you've done that, you need to send me an email, let me know so that I can go in and log in as that Starfish calendar and accept your invitation. So then that finishes that process. Um, this also allows you to change how you're getting notifications if you want them just once a day, uh, not at all. We do recommend it, have them turned on. If you're wanting them less often, then just change it to maybe weekly. Um, but don't turn it off completely because there could be a flag raised that if you have it turned off and you're not normally in Starfish all the time, you would miss it. And, and we want to make sure we follow up on items as fast as we can. Um, so you can customize your notifications here. And under your profile, you can um, update the picture if you would like, add additional ways to communicate with you um, if you would like. So I have my Zoom information available. And then uh, you can put share links. These are very quick links that you can put in, for example, Outlook signatures or emails to students that will take them straight to scheduling an appointment with you in Starfish. Now, as administrators, you're going to spend a lot of time uh, in the students view, or not view, but the students menu option. But in case you are on the student services side, appointments is where appointments can be scheduled or viewed. And this is where you'll see your shared calendars. Again, I only have Paige Lovett's calendar shared with me. But if you click on it, you will see her calendar overlap with your calendar so that you can um, see who's scheduled to meet with her or add in a, an appointment yourself. And last but not least for this quick overview uh, is the student's option. So the student option here, this is where you can click on either your overview. It will give you a chart of all the various tracking items that are currently, in, you're involved with somehow, how those are distributed. Your students, which depending on your relationship or connection, you will see a different population. Um, since I have the admin, I see all the students, so now we see 31,000. Again, that's because we have all the history in here as well. And this is where you can filter by the relationship. So if you're an instructor and a counselor, you'll see two different options. Um, you could filter by term, and then here's where those cohorts come in handy. So you can see ASG students and pull those over, and that looks at Banner. So anytime you see this and you're like, well, it says 20, but we have 21, that means Banner needs to be updated. This looks at Banner each night, it grabs that list. So if the list is wrong, we need to look at Banner and see what we need to do to um, make sure we remove old students and add new students in so that it can be an accurate list. And several cohorts in here, we do have also dual enrollment, we have concurrent enrollment, uh, we have prison. So we have several populations coming in here that you can filter by. Uh, you can also filter by flags, by type, by if you've met with them or not met with them. It's a lot of filtering options. And what's neat is when you're done filtering as far as you need to, you can click this download button and get a CSV file that you can then do uh, follow up on. Or after you have the population selected, you can select the whole thing. It doesn't want me to send more than 15,000 messages at a time. <laughs> uh, so let me add a filter here. Let's do HG again. Just, you know, I'm not going to send any messages, but it didn't want me to even pretend like I was going to. Okay, so now I'm going to check all. So here we go. Check all. I could send a message to that student population. I could type it in here. I could raise a flag on all of them, do a referral, a to-do, or so on. So once you've tailored that population, there's actions you can take immediately in Starfish or even add a note because let's say I offered a workshop to this group and now I want to note that that happened. That can all be done here. And then the final tab is tracking. So tracking would be those uh, tracking items. You can filter them uh, by flag type, by term, and this shows you the follow-up um, that would still be needed on particular uh, students. But that is Starfish. I know it's a lot, I, and I could spend all day talking about this product. It does so many different things, but I hope that that gives you a snapshot 
at least enough so you can see potential for your area if you're not already using it. For those that are, like I know Luis, your area is already using it. Um, hopefully that helps you at least know kind of what to ask when you're ready to start diving into tailoring it best for your program even further.